Hello, welcome. This is part two in our series of videos on Bootsoft Lowrider 2016. Uh, today, our focus is going to be on creating work orders. Creating work orders. Now, let's get our software up and running. We click continue now. Then we select use the demonstration database. We leave the password field blank and we click login. So now Bootstrap Lowrider 2016 is up and running. Uh, there are three tabs. We have the main tab, reports, and work orders. Now, what is our work order? That is the first question we will be answering. A work order is nothing but an order received by an organization from a customer or a client, or an order created internally within the organization. A work order may be for products or services. In repair shops, it is for a service. A work order states the parts or materials to be used or actually consumed in providing the service. In this case, a repair. It also states the labor performed and other miscellaneous charges like machines used. These are instated without the corresponding charges. Boardsoft Lowrider 2016 has all you need to create and track work orders for your repair shops. So this is the work order screen, okay? Now you have a list of work orders listed in descendant order. This is the work order number, this is the status. Now with status, well as you can see, this is completed, this is in progress, okay? So a work order could be in progress, um, it could be waiting for parts, waiting for labor, uh, completed or voided now uh, below in the bottom panel uh, you have the buttons okay so there's the new work order button there's the edit work order button use this void work order button to void your work orders you click complete work order to complete a work order you can always use the print work order button to print any work order, okay? To quickly locate a work order, we use find work orders, okay? Now we begin by setting up our system, okay? We go file, options, now taxes, okay? Uh, there are two tax rates. This is, uh, the, you enter the amount in the boxes, text boxes to the right, okay? Added boxes to the right. Then the names of the taxes, okay? Uh, here we call this one tax one, okay? Uh, you could call it state or tax one. Then here we select the business type uh, vehicles boats, ships, computers, airplanes. Here we are going to use it for vehicles. When you're done, click OK. If you're not going to use it for the items listed below, you can type it into the field. Okay. Now when you're finished, done, click OK. Now we start creating our work order by clicking the new work order button. This brings up the work order window, uh, which is the work order number, the status. Okay. Now we begin by selecting the customer. Uh, you can enter the customer's ID number. 
or you could barcode scan or scan the barcode of the customer's ID into this field. You could also search. Now there are three query boxes that to help you quickly locate any customer's record. When you're done, you click OK. Okay, now you select the customer. Okay, you've selected a customer. Now each work order can have multiple tasks, but each work order um, must be assigned to a single item. A customer may have multiple vehicles. If the customer brings multiple vehicles to your outlet, to, uh, you've, you've got to create a work order for each vehicle okay now uh, in this case we're using it for vehicles so we select vehicles and then we select the customer's vehicle now customer's description of the problem well the alternator seems to be malfunctioning Okay, we click next. Now, this brings up the main screen, okay? The work order screen has five tabs. Customer and item number, parts used, labor used, miscellaneous costs, payments, okay? Now, we click OK and see it's in progress. Well, we're working on uh, the vehicle. Now, to edit a work order, we click edit work order. Now we're going to enter the parts, right? To add uh, parts, we click add. So for this work order, parts, well, list the parts used in solving the customer's problem, okay? So, or uh, in repairing the customer's vehicle. Now, you can enter a new item or you could select from the database or your inventory okay now whenever you enter a new item it is automatically added, added to the database this way you wouldn't have to re-enter um, the product details uh, next time you have to add the same item so we click select part we can scan the barcode of the item, enter the item ID while we can search. Okay, so we quickly select one. Yeah, now it's available. Okay, when the item is available, it says inventory added. When it's out of stock, it says inventory waiting. We can add details. When we're done, we click OK. Now, this was the last item. Okay, this was the last part. So uh, the software is prompting us. It's asking us whether we want to create a purchase order uh, because the parts have uh, the parts the quantity is now below the minimum we set. Okay, now we're not going to create a purchase order here. So we click cancel. It asks us whether we want to add another part. It says no. We are going to say no. Okay. So now you see here the part that we entered. The unit price, the total, we could click add to increase it. Okay. Now here it says lay by used. Now, this is labor used, okay? So we have hours, description, rate, total cost, technician, tech ID, status, okay? Here we enter information about the task to be performed, uh, the person to perform it, 
the number of hours used, uh, consumed uh, in performing the particular labor. So we click add, we select a technician, you can enter the ID of the set. Uh, so we decide to search, okay, so we click. Now uh, we have the name of our technician, then uh, we select the labor, okay, you can create new ones. Now, each labor has weight and hours, so we click select, then we click OK. Now, now we can edit it when we are done. I mean, the time, so we could edit the time. If we spend more time repairing the, uh, the or performing the same task, we can alter it here. Now, they're not going to have any miscellaneous costs. So, miscellaneous costs can be used for uh, I search machine rentals or other costs. Yeah, there's the item description, there's the cost, then we have the notes. Then there's the payments. Here, we enter payment information. Now, the customer has an account on balance. If we want to deduct from the uh, uh, the customer's account, we click deduct for customer's account. We are not deducting. The customer is paying 600 bucks, so we enter it here. Okay, so now we owe the customer 20 bucks 91 cents, 20.91, okay, because it's negative. Now to complete the work order, we can complete work order to complete it. I sure want to complete it, yes. Now change has to be paid out because it's negative, okay. So we're going to um, place it on the customers, we're going to credit the customer's account. So we click yes to credit it. Now, that's it. It's as simple as that. That is how to create a, uh, a work order. We use the find to find a work order. Okay. Now, that is all about work orders. To find out now more program information, uh, this is Bootsoft. Uh, to visit the founder's blog, we click visit to visit the founder's blog. So now we have the founder's blog and the latest tweets, uh, social media on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, or email, okay? And then the latest uh, tweets, uh, you can share this on Twitter. Now, documentation, uh, to launch documentation, you go to help, then click contents to launch the uh, documentation for the software. Now this brings us to the documentation window. This is the documentation, okay? Now, Bootstuff has a YouTube channel. To go to the YouTube channel, we click Bootstuff YouTube channel. So here, Yeah, playlists, and this is the playlist for Boots of Low Rider 2016. This is the first video, repair, uh, Boots of Low Rider 2016. Okay, now we go back, back, and then uh, we click contact. So, to contact Boots of Twitter, and it's about bootstrap. Now, that brings us to the end of part two in our series of videos on how to use bootstrap to load rider 2016. Today, our focus was on creating work orders, creating a work order. Okay, uh, from the main screen, you can also launch documentation by clicking this. Thank you. Have a great day and bye-bye.